Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz, and in this video, we're gonna talk about what it really costs to go digital. Whether you have gone completely digital and you're using products like the Line 6 Helix, or maybe you're using Full Kemper or something of the nature, or you're doing a partial, like a hybrid rig like I'm doing, where pedals into a product, like what I used to do with the Kemper or what I'm doing currently with the HX Stomp. Regardless of what you're using, one of the comments that I get all the time is, hey, I kind of followed your videos, I followed your steps, and I'm still getting this very digital, top-end fizz type of a sound. What's going on? What am I doing wrong? One of my first questions every single time is, how are you hearing back these sounds? Nine times out of 10, when I'm hearing someone saying, I do everything you did and I still can't get a good sound, it typically means they're not listening back to the product in the correct way. For example, I created my sounds here with the equipment basically sitting behind me. See, unlike an amp, when you go to the store, you buy an amp, you take it home, you plug it in, and you play through it. The sound you want out of that amp is there, but not so much with digital products. You buy the Helix, you buy the HX Stomp, you buy the Kemper, the Fractal Axe Effects, whatever it is you're using, you set it at your feet, you plug it in, and then you need other resources to really be able to hear that product in the way that it's supposed to be heard back. Let's talk about some things that you may need that you didn't even realize. One of the more expensive ways to go about it is to actually use studio style equipment like what you see something behind me. Studio monitors like the Yamaha HS5. What I don't want is this monitor that is gonna give me any kind of frequency enhancement, nothing that enhances bass frequencies or mid frequencies. I want the most even sort of monitors I can possibly find. I'm running an interface and I'm running a relatively inexpensive interface. This is a Presonus Audio Box i2, not the most glamorous interfaces out there. There are plenty of amazing ones that come with amazing deals. I recommend that you, I highly recommend that you look for one that gives you somewhat of a package. And I'm not talking about the free mic and headphones because those things are not always the greatest pieces of gear. But what I am talking about is something that offers you some sort of recording system for free, especially if it involves anything like Pro Tools or you know, Studio One like Personas does, or maybe some like Logic, or Ableton. All of, the, all of those things are used by professionals to this very day and definitely can get you to the place where you need to go. You don't always need that. I mean, Macs come with GarageBand on them and that's a very useful tool and definitely can achieve what I'm achieving right now. Then you need a computer, not just any computer, but a relatively diesel computer, a computer that has a lot of hard drive space, a lot of memory, is able to work fast and get you to what you need to do and not slow you down. Especially if you're doing you know, music in this thing, maybe you're doing video edits in this thing, and then you're gonna start storing either plugins or even just, for example, using products like the Kemper where you're downloading profiles or the HX Stomp or the Helix where you're downloading presets. All of those things store. Now you're going to download IRs and that's just more and more files that will be loaded onto your computer. So you kind of need a computer that is a workhorse and that can handle all of the demands that you're going to need. After all is said and done, maybe then you'll pick up a guitar and start playing. Needless to say, that is not on any manual or any like advertisement where you have a company that says, hey, we're the greatest digital product out there, save a ton of money, you don't need to buy all these really expensive amps because we're gonna give them to you for free for the very cheap price of whatever. And then uh, that's it, that's all you need. It's not true. Especially if you wanna hear the product in all its glory. I can't tell you how many comments or messages I've gotten where people are saying, I just can't quite gel with this product. Uh, I think I'm gonna send it back. And then I ask that question, well, how are you listening to this product? What do you, how are you creating your tones? And they tell me run of the mill headphones or like your iPod headphones. Definitely don't use iPod headphones. I've even heard of people using like computer monitors and just the reality is, is that those things aren't meant for that. Well, if I'm gonna be listening to this product live through my in-ears and I should get it to sound good using my in-ears. Products like the HX Stomp, for example, have a specific level and limit to their impedance. So if your headphones don't meet that impedance, you're actually gonna be feeding your headphones a signal that's way too powerful and then it's gonna give you what I call the digital clipping. You don't want that. Digital clipping is nothing like to break up. So we talked about one of the more expensive ways to approach this, but let's talk about one of the more inexpensive ways to approach this. I must admit, this is not my first choice when it comes to listening to a product or even mixing or 
just doing a studio work in general, but it is a necessary uh, piece of gear. And so therefore you can never go wrong with having something like this in your toolbox, which are studio grade headphones. These particular ones are not the cheapest in the market, but they're also not the most expensive, right? They're not five, six, seven hundred dollars uh, type of headphones. These are the Sennheisers, um, the HD 280 Pros. Though they have a little bit more of a low end frequency to them, they are somewhat the most even headphones that I've tried in recent years. Um, again, there I'm sure there are better ones out there, but these are the ones that I'm starting to get used to now. And that's the key, man, getting used to the frequencies that come out of this thing. I've been able to work tones out because I was working late at night or something like that with these headphones and then hearing them the next day on studio monitors or in my car or whatever, and it sounds great. So I highly recommend something like this. So again, I asked the question, what does going digital actually really cost? Well, certainly you cannot budget yourself around just buying a piece of gear like the HX Stomp or like the Kemper Helix or Fractal Axe Effects. You need a way to be able to hear those products in the way that they were meant to be heard. And unfortunately, that does mean it's gonna cost you a little bit more money. Well, what should I do? Should I jump in and start investing into a bunch of gear, studio gear? I'm not even sure what I wanna do with myself and maybe I do wanna have some recording gear in the future, but I'm not sure I wanna do that right now. That's okay. But that's the question you need to ask yourself. Where do you want to be in the next few years? What do you see yourself doing? What do you want to invest in? Now, I'm not saying don't invest in this stuff, especially if you have the, the means and the finances to do it. Certainly, Lord knows I didn't get all this in one shot and I still have not arrived. There's plenty of gear that I wish that I had. But for now, I've been able to great, get really great things out of these products. So ask yourself, do I want to go this route? Is this something I see myself doing? Or maybe this, this is fine. Hey, even if you decide in the next 10 years to become a studio engineer, no studio engineer will ever regret buying studio grade headphones. Okay, plugging this into your product, into the headphone jack, it'll definitely sound 100 times better and will prevent you from making a very fatal mistake by sending a product back or selling a product without truly trying to get the most out of that product. I hope this video has helped you. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you haven't done so, please subscribe, like this video, comment under it, and hit that bell icon so you know when I upload a video, you get that alert immediately. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.